uh, detecting smells. That is some root stuff. I'm talking about root to the ability to even think. I think therefore I am, right? But philosophy aside, it might be more accurate to say I smell, therefore I am. Not I smell, but I smell. Okay, so stay with me on this. We take about 23,040 breaths a day, which gives us plenty of opportunities to sniff out the scents we're entrenched in, or at least the ones that are volatile enough to spew out microscopic particles into the air. And out of all the senses we have, the only one with a direct line to the brain is smell. That means that when you get a whiff of freshly baked bread or a hint of something less savory like microwaved cabbage, these molecules excite a thatch of nerve endings in the back of the throat and the nose, and that is all uploaded, that essence of that smell, to the brain's olfactory bulb by electrical impulses. Why does smell have such a privileged position within the brain? Well, one clue is that chemodetection, detecting the chemicals related to taste and smell, is present in even single-cell organisms. In Diane Ackerman's book, A Natural History of the Senses, she writes about how scent in our waterborne ancestors was used to find an enemy or a mate. It was necessary for survival. In fact, it was so important that smell-sensitive tissue sitting atop the nerve cord developed into the primitive brain. Yep, our cerebral hemispheres were originally buds from the olfactory stalks. And this is why scent is so entangled with memory and emotion, because at that very moment that you're hit with a pungent smell, you're coding it into your long-term memory and attaching it to all the other autobiographical data that goes along with it. Or more specifically, as the researchers at the Kavli Institute for Systems systems neuroscience found out, the brain connects smell to memories through an associative process where neural networks are linked through synchronized brain waves of 20 to 40 hertz. So the next time you get a nose full of some funky smelling volatile molecules, give them a tip of the hat for helping to make the brain what it is today, including the ability to stir some of our strongest memories. Or as Diane Ackerman puts it, Smells detonate softly in our memory like poignant landmines hidden under the weedy mass of many years and experiences. Hit a tripwire of smell and memories explode all at once. A complex vision leaps out of the undergrowth. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. Whether or not we know it, we are all walking databases of smells on our bodies, in our clothes, and in our hair. These things culminate into an autobiography of smell. It's an invisible world of odor acting on the most basic aspects of our existence. If you've ever taken a stroll outside after a storm, you've probably noticed a distinctive smell. Well, that smell is called petrichor, and it's often associated with spring, just like we frequently associate the smell of fresh cut grass with summer. Right now, Paul may be picking up on the creme brulee I just ate in the bellhop lounge room. After all, we carry around with us a database of smells derived from our daily activities.